Hey guys, it's Mrs. Underwood Jones. Um, it's Monday evening, so I thought, right, time to get the next uh, video bashed out to look at and reflect on the week. Um, working from home, being really nice, being really interesting. Um, it, it's quite pleasant to be able to sort of feel comfortable and wander around um, and pick up drinks and go to the loo when I want and not have to be constrained by bells and time. Um, but it was really nice today to go back into school, um, went out and saw the students that were lining up. It was nice to have a chat and see some familiar faces. Um, there's been a few changes at school, so that was also nice to see how how the site looks and you know with some of the stuff that's gone on there uh, so I wanted to do the next video to be able to help you hopefully you've had some time to follow the techniques that were from last week so just as a reminder of what um, what I discussed it was that you know we're gonna try and encourage looking at feeling anxious and feeling worried as perhaps more of a positive thing a way for the body to protect itself um and that actually you know when we looked at the stress curve we said that some stress and some worry can actually be really beneficial and can help us um but it's quite a fine balance between um being helpful and actually being a hindrance um and that it, it's trying to have techniques to keep it within that optimum level um rather than it, it moving over as being overloaded with too much anxiety and stress um so we used a couple of techniques um that hopefully you've practiced as i said before doing them when you're not feeling anxious can then sort of uh, seed it in your mind and, and help with uh, sort of almost like a, a akin to muscle memory um, when you use them when you're feeling anxious so we did the relaxed breathing so deliberately focusing on the breath in order to try and uh, divert uh, the thought process being about what is causing us worry and progressive muscle relaxation so deliberately relaxing and tensing different muscle groups um, because quite a common thing when uh, feeling stressed and feeling anxious is that muscles can tense up uh, so it can help you identify when that is happening so then you can start using a coping mechanism to help you. Um, so this video uh, I've had some help uh, not just Mr Underwood Jones helping me with all the technical stuff that I have no idea about um, but I reached out to teachers and staff at school at school that um, you know that you might miss you might certainly recognize them um, because this video is all about who you know are you alone who else is it can also be suffering um, there's some uh, celebrities that I've googled um, so and there's there's far more than just what I've put together here um, but it's just to give you a picture that talking about feeling anxious feeling worried is really really powerful and you know there's the old saying a problem shared is a problem halved and you know th that does come from somewhere um, it's not sort of a fix-all I'm not saying that it's that at all but I think it's really powerful to hear about other people's experiences and also what they use to cope uh, some of them will be similar to what we've talked about before some of them will be things that will be coming up in other videos and some of them are, are weird and wonderful and you know we said that anxiety can be quite personal but then so are the coping mechanisms so I've got some fancy schmancy music and transitions so we'll see how that goes the, this video was definitely uh, a labour of love um, and a bit of a work in progress um, to put together so just as sort of like a, a user thing about this part of the video I'm probably gonna have the uh, clips and stuff on the screen for about 30 seconds or so um, if this isn't enough time for you to read through all of the captions then I would suggest sort of taking it back and pressing pause and having a look um, it's just so then you know things aren't slower when it comes to uh, the video actually running so you know re-look at the video re-look at the sections pause it take it back re-listen to bits if if needed uh, really make it work for you um, but that's just a little bit of user information about this section
from staff and seeing what other people use and what they do um, because you know we've said before that everybody is going to have you know uh, a moment of uh, or a situation that is going to cause them to suffer from anxiety or worry sometimes those moments are quite short and they pass quickly sometimes those moments and those situations can be quite long um, and it's all about coping mechanisms and having strategies to help you um, so hopefully this video has also given you a bank of those um, to look at as well as looking at the technique um, for this session which is having a thought record so this one is um, a, a little bit more active perhaps in that it needs for you to be 
uh, quite reflective um, and quite probing into your own mind about where things are coming from. Um, but essentially, there are um, auto negative automatic thoughts um, known as gnats. So I, I tend to think of them as gnats, like the, the bug. Um, and that, you know, when we have these negative automatic thoughts, sometimes we don't even realise we're having them. Uh, sometimes we, you know, we can be so ingrained in viewing things in a negative way that we don't recognise that, that those automatic negative thoughts are actually um, a, a product of feeling anxious and feeling worried. Um, and we, we might not necessarily recognise the thought, but we can certainly feel the impact of that thought on how we feel, the way we behave, um, so, so trying to trying to, to swat away and to quash those thoughts um, is going to be quite important in helping um, overcome a particular situation or just coping with that situation. Um, and it is really about trying to use logic to rationalise what can perhaps be irrational thoughts and worries. Um, so there's there's loads of different versions of the the thought record sheet um, on the internet. This is the one that I picked just because it, it it looked quite clean. Um, but essentially, what you're doing is you are writing down perhaps as you go along in the day, or perhaps afterwards once you've reflected, what in the day has caused you to be worried and feel anxious, how that sort of presented itself. Uh, for you because it's quite personal um, for you to then pinpoint what the negative automatic thought was that perhaps caused that cascade of worry um, is there any evidence is, is there anything that might have happened you know previously where you feel that this thought has come from or has caused the thought um, and then it's really starting to look at logic to see whether that thought is a rational thought or if it's just a symptom of feeling worried. Um, so if there's anything that that prove, that disproves the thought, um, then looking at perhaps a different way of viewing that thought that is either negative, um, sorry, is either neutral or positive. And then how does that feel um, once you've sort of looked at that situation, potentially overcome the situation and sort of recalibrated um, your thought process um, and especially ad addressing that negative automatic thought. So this one, I mean, you can print them off, you can, you know, have them around, you know, your room, put them on the fridge, you know, where, wherever's going to help you. But I don't want you to think that having the piece of paper is, you know, the important bit about the process. It's really, really about identifying that negative automatic thought. And it's then about using sort of a logical thought process to look at evidence, to look at past experiences and to, to really try and view it as neutral or even a little bit positive um, because you know the small steps that you make with that will then you know over time build up and be quite a big change in thought process and we know from that hot cross bun that I showed you um, in the first video that you know if we are addressing our thoughts that can then change our emotions our body sensations and our behavior so I just wanted to finish up the video as a reminder that I am not a qualified mental health practitioner. Um, I'm a student support leader in a secondary school, so I've got some insight into talking to students that are suffering from anxiety, whether that's as a short term situation or, or a longer term worry. Um, but that there are loads and loads of other places to go and seek support and if that is something that you need then I would strongly suggest that you do that because being able to be proactive can be really really empowering when it comes to anxiety um, so please remember to look after yourself that you are being kind to yourself and that you are viewing anxiety perhaps in a different way to then 
change how you and your body respond to that anxiety so i will be back again tomorrow with another technique um and we'll have a look at what else you can do to try and support you with generalized worries or if it's a particular worry about coming back into school so look forward to seeing you again tomorrow and um, give things a try if there's anything that I've covered in the videos that you don't understand or you'd like some more information of then just reach out to me via email or the different messaging things that we've got on class charts um, to, to let me know and give me some feedback on if I need to put more detail in if I need less detail if there's particular things that you would like for me to address whether that's particular questions or anything like that, then please feel free to reach out to me. See you soon, bye.